welcome to yet another exciting lesson from our Children's Church Ministry at the Center at Highland Church. My name is Miss Nanine, for those of you who do not know me, and I will be teaching you lesson number nine, Saul Disobeys God's Command. Our lesson text is 1 Samuel 13, verses 5 through 14, and our golden text is 1 Samuel 13, verse 13. Our golden text reads, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. Amen? Before we go any further, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to teach today, and we thank you for the opportunity to learn. We ask, Lord, that you will open the windows of heaven and touch every child and every person watching this video, that they will have understanding of your word and know how to be obedient when you give a command. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, our lesson picks up after Saul is anointed king. Last week, we talked about him being surprised by being crowned the king. So this week, we're going to pick up from the very first lesson that I taught, lesson number seven, when we talked about Israel demanding a king. Now we're going to talk about the consequences of Israel demanding a king for themselves, for themselves rather than let Samuel continue to be their leader okay so our story picks up when the Philistines which were the sworn enemies of the Israelites and they were planning to attack the Israelites which are the people that Saul is now king over so they're the Israelites are very afraid we're gonna talk about the Israelites being afraid we're going to talk about uh, Saul and his disobedience. And then we're going to talk about Samuel being the one who has to break some bad news to Saul. Okay? And that's going to, to, be, to lead directly into the consequences that the Israelites will uh, have to, to face. Okay? All right. So, the Philistines are coming to attack the Israelites. So, the Israelites are afraid. Why are they afraid? because there's so many of the Philistines. There are thousands upon thousands of them. And um, so the Israelites are afraid. Now, prior to this happening, Samuel promised Saul that he was going to come back in seven days and told Saul to wait for him so that he could um, come back and do all that God has commanded him to do when he gets there. Well, because the Israelites were so afraid, they were running and trembling and they were hiding from the Philistines because they feared that they would be taken over and killed. That was the plan of the Philistines. Nonetheless, Saul saw that all the people were afraid and that they scattered from him. They were no longer around him like they were before. Remember in lesson number seven, they were so excited to have a king. And so this is the king that God gave them. This is the king that God gave them as an answer to their demands. And so now Saul is seeing those same people afraid. They're running away from him. They're no longer behind him. They're no longer uh, following him. Okay, and so what do you think Saul did? Saul, he got a little anxious himself because after seven days passed, he didn't see Samuel. It must have been the top of the morning or somewhere around the midday, and he still didn't see Samuel. So he thought to himself, hmm, maybe I should go and offer a burnt offering to the Lord before we go into battle. And so he did that. He went and he uh, told the people to bring him an offering and he burnt it before the Lord. So usually you see this happening that this is they burn offerings and they worship the Lord. This is the way that they worship the Lord. But only the priests were allowed to do that. 
Only the priests were allowed to give those offerings. And so when Saul did it himself, he disobeyed the commandment of the Lord. As soon as Saul was done giving his burnt offering, Samuel showed up. And he saw what Saul did. And he immediately told him, like our golden text says in 1 Samuel 13, 13. And Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. And so then, after he told him that he had disobeyed God's command, he had to break some bad news to him. And I'm going to read a part of the uh, lesson text to show you uh, the news that he had to tell Saul. Okay? So in verse 14, it says, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So we see that there are consequences. And in after, right after Samuel asked him what he'd done, Saul tried to explain away why he did this disobedient thing. He said that because he saw that the people were scattered away from him and that Samuel took such a long time, he thought it upon himself to go and, and give the burnt offering. But no matter how we try to explain or justify our sins, it is still a sin. We must remember that, children. Even though we think it was a good idea or it made sense to do what we did, it's still wrong. How many of you have ever done something wrong and your parents uh, punished you for it? I can remember a time when I was a child and I had five sisters and one brother. And my brother was very spoiled. My parents went away uh, to the store and they asked us to keep an eye on our younger siblings. My youngest brother, he wanted to uh, ride his bike, but my parents warned us not to allow him to ride the bike. If the bike didn't have training wheels on it and he did my parents did not want him to ride the bike without them being there so that they could properly watch him but my brother begged us and begged us and begged us and so we figured if we all the, the three of us got on both sides of the bike we would not allow him to fall but as we we're holding the bike, he insisted that we let go and allow him to ride by himself. We didn't want to, but we thought he asked us to, so we let go of the bike. What do you think happened? He fell into the rose bushes. He was hurt very bad. When my parents returned, even though we explained away why we let him go, why we let him on the bike in the first place, it didn't justify that we had disobeyed our parents' rules. And so we were punished for it. It doesn't matter how you think it makes sense or how you don't think you did anything wrong, it's still wrong because you didn't do what your parents told you to do. And the same goes for us as Christians, as believers. When God gives us a command, we must follow it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense to you. If God said it, we have a responsibility to do it. Amen. I hope this lesson has blessed your heart. I hope you've learned from it. And always remember, it's never right to do wrong. Let's keep God's commandments, children. Have a blessed night.